Morning everybody, Kermie here, hope you're well. It's early on a Sunday morning, the morning after the night before as they say, and I'm at a motel next to the Move Museum in Shepparton where the National Road Freighters Association held a conference uh, yesterday and into last night. Um, it was an opportune time for that conference to occur because there have been events happening in Canberra this week which will uh, have great ramifications for the trucking industry, not only here in Australia but very possibly around the world. So I have, uh, I have uh, spoken to a couple of the guys at, uh, who are involved with the NRFA and asked them if they would drag themselves out of bed early morning and, uh, and have a conversation about what has occurred in this past week. Let's talk to them. Glenn Castanelli and uh, Gordo McKinley, welcome. Thank you for uh, getting out of bed early and uh, after what was a long day and a long night and, uh, and joining us for this uh, quick little chat about, uh, about events that happened in Canberra this past week. Firstly, uh, Glenn, congratulations, mate. You are now the president of the uh, NRFA as of the general meeting yesterday. Is that correct? Uh, yes, mate. I take over after the conference, so I suppose it's official today, mate. Mate, it's, it's close enough and you're there and uh, I'm sure you'll do a, a good job as has uh, Rod Hannafy before you and uh, and you before, yeah, that's Gordo. Right. Okay, and yeah. again, welcome to you, mate, and uh, again, thank you for getting out of bed early. No problem. Um, great conference. Uh, I've got to say, one of the best ones I've been to and uh, um, you had some pretty important people, uh, both from politics and from industry, who attended it. and. Yep. Uh, it shows how the uh, NRFA has, has grown as a body and how important that body is to uh, the trucking industry as a whole. Um, in Canberra the other day there was a passing of a, a bill called Closing Loopholes, uh, which is going to have pretty important ramifications for the trucking industry. Um, Glenn, you might like to start off and just give us a brief background on, on what occurred. Um, after quite a lengthy campaign, Travelling to Canberra, travelling to Sydney to make sure that the legislation was not going to adversely affect us um, small business owners. Um, we went to Canberra. We were, we were not expecting um, to get a result this week. We thought we were going to have to keep on campaigning and we were prepared to keep on going back. Um, we started 2023 with a mission that we were going to carve a path to Canberra and that's exactly what we did. Yeah. You know, um, this week was just surreal. You know, we turned up on um, on, the, on the Monday and we all gathered and we prepared for what we we're going to do. There was a delegation of 34 of us um, from all of industry. And when we were in Canberra, we weren't just representing the transport industry or as we know it, the trucking industry. We were also representing everybody from scooter up. So. You know, little delivery drivers, Uber drivers, courier drivers, mm -hmm. um, you know, pie, pie cart drivers, right up to, you know, our guys in, in the big trucks. And it was just such a gathering of industry that we're all united for the, for this one cause. It was a, you know, and we've done this, this is the third occasion, yeah. Guy. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> this well, yeah, it's been a work in progress, but really for six or seven years yeah, to, to get to this point you know like it um it all it all starts back down to the end of the rsrt and um and our involvement started from from then in this campaign and just the way that everybody has slowly come together and and work you know established that um, we have more in common than not and you know, it's, it's just great how industry has come together and it's a real example of how reform only happens when you've got bipartisan support. And we had that from our industry. Right. So it was, it was a really good case for all sides of politics to jump on board because there was not one side against another in this case. There was, there was no one from our industry against it. From, you know, in our delegation, we had very large business owners. You know, um, we had um, industry group, you know, industry representatives from um, business owner groups. You know, the biggest in the country, and we also had 
you know, representatives from the little guys, and then we had little gig workers in that there. Right. Yeah. It's it's probably worth mentioning um, specifically the NRFA, um, who you represent. Yep. In the industry. Yeah. You're the, you're, you're the small. You, you represent the smaller guy, the the owner driver guy with with one or two or three trucks. Is that a fair fair summation? Yep. Yeah. yeah of the membership of the NRFA. Yeah, we're not restricted to that by any means, but uh, that's certainly probably the most popular demographic of who our member base are. Yeah. But we're certainly not restricted to that. But they're and they're the people that they're, they're the people that need the most help um, that we find. Um, individually, they're the people with the smallest voice, aren't they? Yeah, yeah exactly. So but together, we can it can become a loud voice. one. Yeah. yeah. Gordo, it's, um, it's probably worth uh, bringing in at this point. Um, you and I were having this discussion on Friday night. Um, the RSRT. Yep. And uh, and making clear to people that this closing loopholes bill is quite different to that. So you were against the RSRC at the time, weren't you? You were yeah. one of the leaders of, of uh, people who were against it. Yeah. So you might just like to talk about that a little. So in 2016, I um, had a... I suppose I was the, the, the leader of a, a very small but very um, active group of people that put in all their time to fight against the RSRT legislation after we were unable to have amendments made um, to, to so it was workable. The RSRT was um, only in capturing family uh, and owner drivers and small family businesses. So if uh, family members of the, of the entity uh, were driving the truck, they were forced to charge a certain rate and anyone that wasn't was free to charge whatever they liked and it wasn't that we didn't need help we most certainly did need help the, the rates were horrible uh, and still are but we that that system couldn't work so I first of all tried very hard to have things changed and we couldn't so then it was you know fight it or, or, or go under so we we let a a campaign to eventually uh, have that the RSRT abolished. So the the legislation that made the RSRT was repealed in Parliament. So that no longer exists, and it's very important to that people know that the RSRT is no longer a legislated uh, bill. It does not exist. It's gone. Uh, in the very early days of discussions with lead, what led to this. Uh, closing the loopholes bill, um, we there were some things that concerned us for sure. So we, as an association, um, worked with the, the the both the Labor Party and the um, TWU, who were the the main bodies trying to get this new legislation up. Mm. They were trying to get the RSRT through, weren't they? Well, that's what people... They, well, I mean, look, they were the, they were the RSRT supporters for yep. sure. Um, and then the... Um, we So we started developing this, this legislation which we've just had come through. And we had, like, massive input into that. We were at... at there were points where things weren't going in the direction that we thought they should, so we were, you know, freely listened to, and pretty much generally the changes that we thought were were, were important were made, and so this this bill has come from within the industry. You know, we we people that have got the experience and and the runs on the board, we know what we need and and the other thing with it is which is very very important to note is this is is not exclusive to any any group it it encompasses the whole industry now what is it it's not uh setting rates today or anything like that what this has done is it's it's allowed um the formation now of uh, transport advisory groups so when there's a certain concern in the industry that we we feel needs some kind of legislative improvement the people that have the experience with that particular part of the industry will be called upon to uh, form this transport advisory group or groups yeah, well, subcommittee subcommittees the group. Yeah. yeah and 
So it will be, it will be industry that designs the changes that will become, you know, um, enforceable uh, regulations that, yes, some of them will have to do with, with pay. Um, probably the first thing that we, we really feel we'd like to get through is 30 day payments. I mean, it's people waiting 120 days, 150 days for payment. Mm. And you just cannot survive on that. No mm -hmm. one can do that. Yeah. And that's putting pressure on small business, medium business. And so that's that's probably the first thing that we'll try and get through. And that's a, that's low hanging fruit, relatively easy. And that in itself will be a massive improvement. Yeah. And the, the beauty of the way this is set up is that um, there was a lot of to and fro on and people over here saying, we want to be on that group and you know we need to be on that group. But because of the in industrial relations laws, you're only allowed to have two representative bodies for each um, industry segment. So we've got one for the owners and we've got one for the drivers. And then they have to, their, re their remit is to consult with the whole of industry. So we, we've got opportunity here to have a 50-50 input from you know, blokes like us behind the steering wheel or in small business and, um, and also the big corporations. So we can work together to come to an agreement which you know, just getting this bill through shows how well we can work together, mm. which really gives us the optimism to know that going forward, this can work. You know, if we were to have um, another big organisation come in and, and ha be in that group for, for its members and another one over here, where would it stop? Mm. And that was the hardest thing for us to explain to people mm. that, you know, it would be great if everybody all, you know, automatically had a seat at this table, but a small board in any of the corpora corporation works way better than having people that can never agree. Yeah, you yeah. Know? And I guess, I guess um, people may consider it to be um, disparate or, or strange bedfellows that, that the, the, a group such as the TWU sat back after the RST, RSRT had, had uh, been canned um, and had a rethink about it as well, and were prepared to come to the table um, as, as, as for, for, for the communal best yeah. interest, if e you like. Everybody realised <coughs> the only way we can have a future, like a positive future for road transport, was to work together. Yeah, I think it's very important to note too, and this is this is very important for the sceptics and the people that you know think I've lost my mind. Why am I? you know, jumping out on board with the TWU and, you know, I've copped a fair bit of flack over it and that's, that's fine, you know, no worries. But the biggest thing to remember is that at every single point, including this weekend at our conference, you know, both sides of parliament, both sides of government were asked to come and join us. And same thing in Canberra, you know, there was... Senator Glenn Stirl's um, inquiry into a safe and viable transport industry. At every point, Glenn asked for bipartisan involvement from both sides of the. Of which, the which you got Susie McDonald. Was yeah, and we and we, we, we did. Everyone. Yeah, and and we've Paul had that, yeah. but in in on a smaller scale. The you know at the end of the day, the the Labor Party, and. The TWU were very, very active, and they've they've taken this, you know, they've taken this on. So we could either be totally ignorant and ignore the help that was being offered to us, and say, well, you know, I'm I'm not going to go down that path because I don't like the TWU or I don't like Labor. No, we we had an open mind for which we've been caned, but that's fine. At the end of the day, we can see the benefits and, you know, that it is what it is. If you want help, you've got to go with the yep. people that are offering to help. And, and if you're getting bipartisan su yep. support yep. from all areas... And that is getting better uh, every day. Then, then yep. you, 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 yep. you're going to make strides. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And, and the help we got was more like the opportunity because we, we had the opportunity at every point to have input. Yep. And that's been very important. Right. Yeah, that's that is a you know we gained opportunity. Um, RTO, RTO 
they're, they're the representative body as well as the TWU, and they were just as active. And they, they brought their members along. So it might be worth explaining what, who they, because a lot of people yeah. don't know who they are, Glenn, yeah. so. Yeah. Okay, so the National Secretary of RTO is um, Peter Anderson, who's very well known, because he's also um, you know, the CEO of BTA. He's, um, he is a very, very passionate man for our industry and, and cares so much about everybody in the industry. Like, we have really got to know him. Mm. And they are a, um industry organisation that's registered and audited and everything, same as a union, but they represent anybody that, that, um, that, that owns three mm. trucks or more. Okay. Yep. And the union in fair work represents anyone who owns two trucks or less. And that's just how it's split. Yeah. It's like you don't get a choice. That's We're, that's in concrete. Like that's that's, that's yeah. in concrete. Yeah. And we um we our members are in both camps. So, you know, we go to here and we go to here. So we're actually um because we're so vocal and we're so passionate, we sort of fit into nowhere but everywhere. And um, RTO have branches in every, in another six states, so they're nearly in every state. And then in most cases, they're, um, they're run out of or, or um, in parallel with the industry associations like QTA and PTA um, and VTA. And we've got a direct line, our members, and and even our non-members. You know, like I mean, look, if someone if if someone that's not a member talks to us and, and has a concern, you know, we still have that direct line to Peter Anderson, who if it's a if it's a person with you know with um, three three or four trucks or a dozen trucks, or whatever, mm -hmm. we can go to Peter directly. Peter will pick up the phone or answer an email or whatever, you know. And at the same time, an owner driver uh, with one truck can come to us and we can be straight on the phone to, we've got many contacts at the TWU. So, you know, we, we can be that that link, I guess, yeah. you know. Yeah, and it's very handy for our segment of the industry because um, people, they want everything fixed, but they don't want to get involved, yeah. you know, and... That's what our industry it's, it's, struggles with. Yeah. It's the same. Yeah, yeah. It's the same with 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 yeah. just about any committee. You know, everyone yeah. goes rah rah. We we want this to happen, and you ask for a, a show of hands who wants to get yeah. involved, and people yeah. tend to step yeah. back. So it's more often than not left to the few, and uh, you two are uh, some of the few, couple of the few that uh, have uh, gone above and beyond to uh, to work with whoever will work with you to yeah. to improve the industry uh, at large. And for everybody that's involved with it, exactly. Um, hats off to you guys. It's uh, we we have nothing to gain from this other than to see our industry, yeah. you know, grow and thrive. And you know, we are just we're just humans, and we see the pain and the suffering of people who are trying to struggle, of you know, owner drivers who are um, you know spend way too too long away from their families and, and they miss everything with their kids. You know, we've been through that. Okay, um, Gordo and I, have, we, we no longer own trucks. That's because it wasn't, we, we found it wasn't viable. It wasn't, it's not viable. Mm -hmm. You know, I do something else in transport and, and I do what I love now, which is I go and help people who own trucks work out this, this all the systems that they just don't understand. And, and because I've got a good grasp of it, I go out and, and help. And um, I'm really lucky I've been able to find something that I love to do. Yeah. But we um, we love trucks. And if, if we could make a good living and also have a good life where we don't lose our wives, we don't disconnect from our children because we haven't been to any of their special events for their whole lives. Mm. You know, they're the things that really count. Yeah. You know, and that's where we've come from. You know, that's our our background, and that's why we're so passionate about fixing this industry for everyone, not just NRFA members, not just TWU, not just RTO, everybody. You know, that's that's where we come from. Yeah. So this 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 uh, bill, which goes to the lower house for ramification in six months, I think, before it uh, it becomes law, uh, is just the first step, isn't it? 
there's uh, yeah. there's still a long way to go. So what how I like to describe it, Kermie, is this bill is it's given us the vehicle or the chassis, if you like, you know, and now we're going to assemble. We're going to now we've been given that we've been given that vehicle that we can now assemble the way we want, so we can we can put the the um, advisory groups together and whatever, and we can start to look at what we need to change. You know, what was the you know. If, if you have 15 or 20 things all in on your table on the first day, you know, I'll be honest, they're not going to get changed. And and this doesn't mean that next week everyone's going to start making huge money or have better conditions or whatever. But what it means is it's given us the framework that we need to start to build on to make those changes. And that work, now, like, we've, we've worked very hard to get to this point and the work doesn't stop. We will now, you know, kick it into the next gear and we start to work towards... You know what what we need to achieve, and what people what what do people in the industry need to achieve? If we if we did a, a poll, I don't know how we'll we'll work out what the first thing to do is. But if if the first thing that comes up is people say we need to be paid on time, then that'll be the first thing that we'll we'll attack. If it means if you know if people if it just depends, you know what the industry will tell us and that's the beauty of it it's we're led by the industry what the industry tells us needs to be fixed that's what will be concentrated on the exactly. the powers that be yeah and and the goals are you know safe sustainable and viable mm. and people say well what do the what does that mean you know um that means that you can go to work in your truck and you do your work and you can make enough without having to be away forever you know, without having to never have a holiday, you know, in it, you know, most truck owner drivers, the only time they'll take time off work is if they're, you know, getting married or going to a funeral, you know, or something like that for a very close family member. That's mm. that's probably it. Mm -hmm. you know, um, normally it's just the minimum hours you can have at home because you need to keep you need to keep going because it's not viable otherwise, you know. Yeah. And the pressures and the pressure just the family pressure and the pressure on everybody not to fail because it's a big choice to go out and become an owner driver. You know, you go out and you you gamble your whole family's future on your love of trucks because yeah. that's where it comes from. Mm -hmm. You don't become an owner driver because you, you know, because of any other reason other than you don't go out and buy a four hundred thousand dollar truck unless you love trucks. Sure. All right. Yeah. And and that passion is um really um. It's, it's, it's a great thing for the industry, but it's also um, a bad thing for the industry because, mm. you know, you'll never give up. People will keep you'll doing it. Yeah, yeah, you'll sacrifice, you know, what everybody else takes for granted. You'll sacrifice that to prove that you haven't failed at your dream. Mm. You know, and we out of this, we want people to be able to have that dream, own their truck, make a good living, be able to take a couple of weeks off of their family, be able to... You know, your kid's first day at school, you know, miss a trip to go to that, you know. You should be able to do that without having to, you know, work the next two weeks straight or something, you know, just to make sure you've got enough money to pay for your fuel, you know. Like, this industry, it if it's not viable, nobody's going to want to come into it, you know. And and safety and everything else, but it's really the, the human part of it that, that we are about. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Congratulations to you both and to the NRFA. Um, I, I know that, that your group has been at the forefront of this charge uh, and it's great that, that other industry bodies have come along with you as well as government, as well as unions and so forth. It's a first step to hopefully a, a, a different and a much better world for, for the trucking industry and everyone who gets behind the wheel. Uh, we look forward to seeing what the future will bring. Thanks, Jeremy. Yeah, Guys, thanks. thank thanks you very much. Really Thank's appreciate right. your time. Thanks for your time. Now uh, you can uh, pick up that, uh, that... It is coffee, guys, that, it is uh, coffee, that he's been yeah. sipping yeah. on. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. not, it's not a stout. Yeah. Uh, yeah, again, congratulations. Much. And it's probably just worth reiterating that this is nothing and bears no resemblance at all to the RSRT. RSRT is yeah. dead. Yeah. It doesn't exist. It does, there is no RSRT legislation. It was repealed in 2016. Yeah. So listen up, people, and don't give these guys a hard time when you see them in the street because that's not what this is about. 
because uh, they have been there for you and, uh, and they will continue to be there for you. And this is beyond partisan politics. It is beyond partisan groups that may exist within this industry and other industries. It's about everybody coming together and going for a common good. Yep. Guys, thank you very much. Thanks, guys. Mate. Cheers. It's just because we In love trucks and we love the, you know, you should be able to own a truck yeah. Yeah, and have yeah. a good life. Yeah. That, there was a question asked of me, you know, um, what's going to stop the, the big bombs just buying all their own trucks? I'll tell you what it is, supply and demand. Because on the 23rd of December, when you're trying to keep a soft drink up to all these places and everything else that everyone wants at Christmas and the joint's going absolutely mad, you need, let's let's just, for round big, let's say you need 10,000 trucks doing the job on that day, right? Mm. Well, guess what? On the 28th of December, you need like a 1,000 trucks. That's how it is. Yes, yeah. So Lynn Fox and Toll, they can't afford to have all these trucks sitting around doing nothing with no... Of course not. Paying drivers and paying for trucks, and so we, the we are the we're the elastic bit in the middle, you know. Yeah. yeah. And so Good they're never ever going to want to get away. Look, they can't do it without. It's simply not viable for them to to not have us. So you know, don't panic about that. That's not going to change. Mm. You know, there's already rates out there in the world. There's New South Wales, Victoria, Queensland, and WA already have owner driver rates. But they're only guidelines. Oh. Yeah, which, they're are, enormous. which aren't worth what the paper they're written on. Exactly. Yeah. So, but we're, we we're just that. after minimum standards, mate. Yeah. That's it. Of yeah. operation. And they need minimum standards. It's not too much to ask. And I think if someone made the comment, I don't know if it was you, Gordo, made the comment, if it adds a, a cent to a bottle of Coke, stiff shit. Yeah. Sorry. Like, I mean, stiff shit. No one is going to notice well, a cent on a bottle of Coke. I did a calculation there one day on, on like a bottle of, on, well, Chris and I didn't know how many cans there were in a, <laughs> what do we yeah, yeah, There's about there's roughly three to a kilo, so there's so there's three thousand to a ton, and you got forty ton on a on a double, so you got one hundred and twenty thousand cans of soft drink, say on a B double load, and um, mate, let's say you got another five hundred, we'll call it six hundred dollars for round figures, on a trip, six hundred divided by one hundred divided by one hundred twenty thousand is all. The entry industry. level to our industry. Is too low. so low, yeah. So low, like um, you know, you would have met Sonny and his mate. You know, they learnt so much here yesterday because they, this there's no there's no information out there for anybody who goes out and buys a truck wants to be a transport operator. Yeah. So yeah. what they've just come into the industry, have they? They joined up as members. Yeah. They're, they're new to the industry. They've got experience and everything, and they love trucks. And you know, the the only requirement to be in the NRFA. As far as I'm concerned. Have a heartbeat, 120 bucks. <laughs> uh, how do people join you in RFA and uh, how much is it going to cost them, guys? Well, El um, Capitan. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry, I missed that. <laughs> El Capitan. <laughs> There's not a lot of requirements to join the RFA. To join the RFA, um, you only need to go to our website and there's a sign up button on there and you can fill out the form and do your automatic payment, which is only $120 a year which is paid monthly, so it's $10 a month. Um, it's not a money-making machine. No, <laughs> $10 <laughs> a month, I'm sure it's not. But it's a place where people who love trucks, because that's a requirement as far as I'm concerned. If you, if you love trucks and you've got a heartbeat and you can afford yeah. 10 bucks a month, yep. join the NRFA, because that's who we are. We're, we're people who love trucks and love the transport industry. Well, when I leave here, I'm going to go home and do just that. Oh, thanks, Kevin. Thanks, guys.